This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident with the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another sunny, beautiful, blue sky day. We're really enjoying this unusual temperature this time of year. I am Matt Allen along with Dave Riccio, and together every Saturday we are your KTAR car guys right here on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Our goal here at Bumper to Bumper Radio is to help you with your overall car ownership and driving experience. So whether you have a question about a repair, uh, you have a question about buying a new car, selling a car, anything as it relates to the automobile, we are here for you. And you can get a hold of us, ask us questions several ways. Do that on the telephone at 602-277-5827. It's 602-277-KTAR. You can text at 411-923 as well. And uh, you can find us always at bumpertobumperradio.com. So today we're on the roadmap. We're going to have an email of the week, as, of course, as I said, always on the telephone for you. And uh, I was having a little conversation with Siri earlier, asking her what the weather's going to be like. And all I saw was 87, 87, 87, 86, not very many clouds. It's warm. And we're seeing in, in my shop right now, too, air conditioning work is happening. So we figured we'd... We'd bring you up to speed on on uh, what's happening in the world of air conditioning and maybe why you ought to uh, – maybe now is the time to get the air conditioning service and checked out before we start seeing – before that transition goes to where Siri, mm. if you have your iPhone, is always telling you it's going to be 100 and then pretty soon 110, right? It, it's February. Holy mackerel, Dave. Yeah, now is a great time of year to get it done because shops are not uh, as busy with AC work or air conditioning work. Because it's just not that hot yet. And you may have turned your air condition on, and maybe it felt okay when it was 85 degrees on, uh, out. But is it going to work good when it's 105 degrees out? And air condition service can oftentimes be a two-step process. Well, I wanted to say one thing. And there's a myth, though. I've heard some people say, well, it's too cold. We can't service your air conditioner. Do you think they stop manufacturing cars in the wintertime that... that you know, they still hold the same amount of refrigerant. So you can still, I'm sorry, Dave, but you can still get the car. It doesn't have to be hot to have your AC checked and serviced because it's done by measurement and, and weights of refrigerants and stuff. But Well, now's go a good time to get it done. So get it into the shop for an AC service. And what is an AC service, Matt? I mean, I think that's the, we got to clarify that first because people get, I see coupons for a $29 AC service and you know and I know all you can do for $29 is get someone in the door and tell them they need an AC, a real AC service. Well, yeah, you've got to look at the, you know, at the fine print on the ads, and, and oftentimes it's not the fine print. But you do, I guess, yeah, what is an AC service? Before we even get to the price, what the heck is it? Yeah. Uh, um, there's some AC checks where somebody might open the hood. We're going to look at the belt. We're going to look around at the components and confirm that they're all there. Um, we might put our hand up or put a thermometer and say, you know, it's not quite blowing cold, or we might say it looks like there's a leak, but it's a visual inspection, a lot of these. And and it's just, I see some of these $19 coupons like you're talking about, it's an AC service. And I think what that yep, is, it's broke. That's just, it's not, it's, 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 it's you paying them $29 to tell you there's something wrong with your car that you need to spend some more money. We hear the ads on, on KTR for the home air conditioning guys. And I forget who the guy is that, that does the ad, but it like rings a bell in my head. Boom. The guy's right on the money. It's like, yes, our AC service is a hundred dollars more than some of our competitors. But all they're doing is coming out to look at a couple things and tell you you need the stuff that we're already going to do in our service. So I guess part of it is when do you need a service? Maybe if your air conditioner is not performing well, that that's usually the benchmark. If it's not if it's not working well, it must be needing a service or having something wrong with it. But the way these cars are now, they hold so little refrigerant, you can be down an ounce, two ounces, three ounces, and it's going to affect the performance. So. What is a service? To me, it's a visual inspection of all the components. Test a physical test of are they working? Is the is the thermometer, is air blowing out? Is the cabin air filter clean? Do we have flow? Is the fan working? But otherwise, if we want to measure what's if we want to truly test, the only way to to confirm that the system has a proper charge level is to take everything out 
weigh it, recycle it, if you will, put it back in the system and, and measure what comes out. If it holds one pound and you only pull out 10 ounces, well, we're low. You, you don't know that unless you evacuate the system. So even if you have a car that's two, maybe three, four years old, then you're not too far away from necessarily needing an AC service. Maybe it didn't perform as the first two years you own the car. Well, AC, an AC system is a sealed system filled with a refrigerant or gas, uh, and what happens is it has to have one pound of that refrigerant in there. I'm just going to use one pound right now for, for that particular system. And a good, tight AC system without any issues is probably still going to lose an ounce a year. I mean, just because it's nothing is perfect. Perfect is only in our mind, so it's going to lose a little bit. And when you get, start to get two, three, four ounces off, now your AC doesn't quite do what it used to do. And you're disappointed with the output of the air condition. Well, yes, maybe it is time for a, the service that you just described. But you don't get all that for, for $19. $29 or $19 no. or okay. something like that. I mean, I think at a, at a good quality shop that's going, that is not there in using this coupon as a lost leader, hoping that, hoping that you really have a problem and we can convert this into a sale, I mean, I think you're going to spend 150 bucks on that service. So, I mean, it's going to go down a couple of different ways. At Virginia Auto Service, my shop, when we're going to service your air conditioner, there's, there's a series of questions. We're going to interview at the counter. You're going to feel like you're being interrogated. Does it blow cold? Does it blow? Oh, it's not very cold. Okay, so tell me, when is it not very cold? Is it not very cold in the afternoon after it's sat in the car? Or sat, sat in the, the sun, sun all, all, day. all day, but in the morning it blows nice and cold. That's a typical symptom. So, yeah, we can guess that it's low on refrigerant, but you still get the people that come and say, oh, can you just shoot some in? Well, you can, but you can't because you have to. It's very critical. The charge levels on your uh, systems is so critical. You, you can shoot some in, but if you go over by two ounces, that's as bad or, or, or can be worse in some instances than being under by two or three ounces. So what we're going to do, if this comes into my shop, we're going to go, we're going to feel how's the system working. We're going to drive it and just see what you're feeling and, and have some idea. And then from there, depending on what we find, maybe we're going to find it doesn't work at all. We're going to see if the system has a charge. If it's working and it has a charge, we're going to recover what's it, cut, recover the refrigerant that's in there. We're going to weigh it, and then we're going to put back what it's supposed to be there. If it was full, well, we're still going to put a slight charge of dye in there with oil, and, and that dye is ultraviolet dye. That's going to hang around for a long time. So maybe you really don't have a leak right now, or you don't have a significant enough leak that warrants a repair. Maybe six months or next season you will. Well, that dye will be there, and we'll be able to more easily find find the problem. But in some cases, Dave, you come in, the air conditioning doesn't work at all. Then you've got it. Does it have, it might have a full charge, but the compressor's not coming on. So there's a lot of different ways that, that this service can go. But that's the first starting point is make sure it's full, full of refrigerant. Make sure that all the components are there and working as they're designed to work or have the ability to work. And one of the things we didn't talk about is a condenser fan. Condenser fans tend to be an issue. <clears throat> I see that, you know, where it's a fan is not performing or working at all, and so it's not cooling like it should, and that's something else you're going to check. You're going to check the, you check, talked about the airflow inside the car, where there's also airflow outside the car, is we're pulling air across the radiator and the condenser, and if that's not up to speed, a lot of these fans are two-speed, three-speed, and then a lot of times they deteriorate over time and just not, not producing the air like they used to. Or, you know, all the sand and very fine particles that are on the roads, that bounces up. That's, that's, just, that's in the air. You're on the highway. That's just getting packed into the grill. It's in the radiator. It's in the condenser. So sometimes we've got to clean that out. We've got to hose it. We've got to blow it. I mean, we've had to separate. And, and a basic cleanup is part of a service. But, I mean, we've taken a, we had a big diesel truck where the guy does ranch leasing and, and whatnot. I don't know how many pounds of dirt we took out of the, out of the uh, air conditioning system. So you don't really have to have anything broken, per se, to have a performance issue. Well, we appreciate those of you who could join us last week. We were out at Interstate All Battery Centers, and Matt and I use Interstate Batteries in our own shops, and we're talking about AC service, and how does that relate to, how does that relate to uh, batteries, uh, Matt? I mean, 
AC, big part of the deal. Well, the, the battery's there for your reserve electricity, and now all of a sudden you're, you're, you're running the air conditioner. You've got an electromagnet on, on, the, uh, on, the, on the compressor, the clutch. That's, that's, yeah, it doesn't draw a whole lot of amps, but it, it's drawn amperage that you may or may not have been using before, depending on the, on the uh, defrost and the type of system. Man, you've got that fan turned up full blast. You're, you're, you're putting an extra drain on the system. So without having a fully charged battery, now that's not to say that you need a, you need a new battery because it's AC season, uh, but it's one of those things, it's, it's an extra tax on the system. So one of the things that we do, I don't care if you're getting an AC service, an oil change, or a tire repair, we're always going to test your battery because the last thing you want coming into summertime anyway, that's when we see the highest failure rate. You want to get those batteries tested and replaced before you're that guy. Go to bumper to bumper radio.com to get more information about interstate batteries. When we come back, we're taking your calls at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road. And a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave. And one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee, and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. Cool cars, cool people, and good times. There are literally thousands of hot rods. That's what you get at a Good Guys Giant Automotive Festival. My husband loves the swap meet and all the treasures he can find for his car. We're kicking off the hot rodding season at Westworld in Scottsdale, March 4 through 6, with the 7th Spring Nationals. We're here for the autocross racing competition. Totally a hot rodder's dream. The kids love the cars, and I love the cars, so why not bring the family out, right? We're the Good Guys, March 4 through 6 at Westworld. Get to Get some more info at good-guys.com. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Hey, if you want me to take a dump in a box and mark it guaranteed, I will. I got spare time. But for now, for your customer's sake, for your daughter's sake, you might want to think about buying a quality product from me. That is the all-time great automotive clip. You know, Matt, we see parts salespeople in our office all the time. And uh, some of them are selling dump in a box. Garbage. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you're just joining us, I'm Matt Allen. This other guy here is Dave Riccio. And every Saturday, we're here with Bumper to Bumper Radio to help you with your car. So if you need some help, have a question, 602-277-5827. It's 602-277-KTAR. And we've been talking about how nice the weather is. And what, you know, it's unusually warm, and we're already seeing air conditioning system repairs. And that's a, that's a thing you need to watch out for. Don't, don't the coupons, you got to love them. I coupon shop occasionally. This is one of those things. You need to make sure you're, ha you're in that relationship with your shop, and you're going in. With Dave and I always talk about have a relationship. Don't coupon shop $19. Don't go to the... You know, if the place says, um, you know, some kind of specialty, but they just happen to do AC repair, like, the, oh, brakes, now all of a sudden we fix air conditioners. Well, great. You know, loop shop, oh, we do AC service now. They got the kid holding the sign up. That might not be the best place. I mean, I want you to go <laughs> where the people can solve your problem and take care of the whole car. So uh, just be cautious. Ask questions. There's no $19 fix for your air conditioner. There's no $29 fix for your air conditioner either. So if we can help you, we will. 
We've got John Ryan Chris, but we're going to go with Mike. He's got a 2008 Mitsubishi. How can we help you, Mike? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, Mike, you with us? Yes. How can Thank we help you? Guys you guys for taking my call. You bet. Uh, I have a 2008 Mitsubishi Raider. I had a friend of mine who said, hey, Mike, your brakes are squeaking. Maybe you should get that checked out. I got a friend of mine who could look at it for you. Well, he did that. He said, yeah, you need new pads. You put the new pads on. The next morning, I'm strolling out, leaving the house, and I noticed I hit a bump, and I hear this ching sound, like ching ching. I didn't know what that was. I'm like, well, that sounds like it's coming from the front end. Well, I happened to stop in and talk to a friend of mine, and he said, Mike, they didn't put the clips on the brake pads. I said, again, I'm not mechanically inclined. I don't know what the, the clips are. But he they're, said, they're just extra parts. You don't need I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can say it didn't make that sound prior. Is that, a, is, that a, is that put me in a bad position, not having those clips on there? Well, yeah, because, you know, the manufacturer put those there for a reason. I, I, I guess there's some parts, Dave, that we can arguably uh, argue with an engineer whether or not they really need to be there or not. I'm not sure which clips he's talking about, but when you're, when you're talking about a brake job, the, there's – on that radar, I think it's got a floating caliper. There's going to be some upper and lower clips on each side of the brake pad, and those clips are spring-loaded, and they're, they're there to hold the pad into place. So it doesn't flop around. I mean, it, it just yeah. keeps that, fills that gap. It keeps and, the pad and to in to dampen nice. some vibrations. But then there's also, I guess they would re refer to them as a clip, but then there's a slide. There's a backing on the, ba the brake pad that in some cases clips on, and there should be some, some lubricant there. But those clips shouldn't fall out. So I'm less worried about the clip necessarily missing as is there something else that's been left loose that allowed that to happen, and now you have another problem waiting to occur. Was there a bolt left off or something? But, uh, you know, I, I guess that's what happens sometimes when you have a friend of a friend, that new Ferris Bueller kind of deal, fix, <laughs> you know, fix your car. Um, brakes are something that, that sh I think should be left to a professional. Uh, I put it on jack stands, run in reverse, the odometer will go the other way. Right, right, Ferris right, for Ferris. But um, I would suggest having that friend recheck that. And what you can probably do is get a brake hardware kit. Mm. If you're buying good quality brake pads, usually the hardware kit comes in it. Dave, you and I went to the, the Centric brake plant. Now, nobody's going to hear about Centric because... They don't market. They sell. And there shops, is some things that come in those kits that didn't come on the car originally. You know where the where the pad slides across the knuckle right there. They got some little shields you can put on there because mm -hmm. that gets grooved and worn out. And so there's some things as the car gets older that you start to use on there that weren't there to start with. And I think maybe what we should do, Dave, is someday have a show about what a proper brake job is because you can. You know, it's like a steak. You can have a steak, or you can have a really good steak. I mean, I can slap some brake pads on the car. That's Tommy Boy there, right? <laughs> we could slap some brake pads on the car and call that a brake job. But there's a big difference when a professional, like the way we do it, does a brake job, and the, what we call, you know, Harry Homeowner does the brake job. <laughs> Huge difference. For sure. Well, thanks for the call, Mike. 602-277-5827. We're going to go with John. He's got an air conditioning question. How can we help you, John? You are on Bumper uh, to Bumper you. Radio. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. I've been, uh, you know, working on, uh, you know, my own car for about uh, uh, 45 years. So, uh, you know, uh, noticing a lot difference. In the old days, you used to just look for the little bubbles in the sight glass. And then, yeah, you know, much easier. And then, uh, you know, I had to buy the gauge set. But when I heard that you had to evacuate the system and weigh the... the uh, coolant kind of put me uh, back a little bit. Couldn't you just notice that it was low with the gauge set? Well, you you could, but the question is, well, how low is it? Well, wouldn't that determine on the gauge by the pressure? Not necessarily. I mean, no, n not necessarily. I mean, you're going to get it close, but uh, no, yeah, you're gonna you're definitely going to get it close. But you're not going to be able to, to know exactly. And, it, and, I mean, you're talking 40 years ago, you started working on cars. Your old um, system where, where it had a sight glass or a POA valve or whatever, you, you couldn't uh, – I mean, there's a huge margin of error. That thing holds four pounds of refrigerant. So you could start adding R12, and it was much cheaper. Remember, you could buy it for 49 cents a can and – and That's back I, when we hold, had the hole in the end zone layer. <laughs> yeah, the, ozone, the end zone, the ozone. Um, yeah, so so there was there was much greater margin of error. The product was 
was uh, much less expensive and the system much less sophisticated. So today, and I know at the auto parts store they sell the can of of uh, refrigerant of 134 and it's got some additives. It might even have a leak sealer in it, which you want to stay away from. You could probably get it close. I guess they say close enough for government work, right? <laughs> <laughs> but if you want it to be perfect, it needs to be done right. Well, yeah, I and mean, when you're talking about a pound and just to be an ounce off, you're off by 10%. If you had a four-pound system and you were off by an ounce, it would be in, insignificant. And now, now it's it's a bigger number when you're off by an ounce. And so that's that's the key difference. And there's there's charts too. I mean, I remember when I was first learning this stuff in the 80s. We, you know, you need to know what the barometric pressure was, how hot, what the ambient temperature was, the old pressure temperature, chart. what the what the humidity was, because just because there was bubbles in the site class didn't necessarily mean it was it was really low. Or I mean, there's there's a lot of things happening in there. So thanks for the call, John. It was a, a good question, but the Times have changed. I'm just looking at some of the texts here, Matt. Uh, <clears throat> tech, uh, we got a tech that likes to text, and he had a customer come in with the AC system that wasn't working. Found the wire at the back of the compressor unplugged, plugged it in, and they're on their way. So sometimes it can be simple like that, you know. Yeah. So be careful. That's where some of those coupon deals might bait you in. You end up buying a whole AC system that you didn't need. They say paint it blue and call it new. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Uh, yeah, it happens, for, unfortunately. For sure. So you want to be working with a good shop, and uh, we call it orphan customers. You know, when you're running from shop to shop to shop because, you know, I got a coupon here, the oil change, ah, 29 seems reasonable. Everything there must be reasonable. Don't that let that reflect on the prices for the whole shop. And you know what we need to get to also, Dave, on there? Because oftentimes it's a two-step process. And what we're doing when you come in for a service, that is usually a service, not a repair. When we come back, we're taking more calls at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR car guys. Here's what Carrie from Tempe had to say about her experience with Good Works Auto Repair. As soon as you realize, I need to get some work done on my car, I'm sure the thought occurs to you that you're about to get taken for a ride. I used to share the same sentiment and wondered if the shop was going to make something up and have me spending hundreds of dollars instead of 30 I was planning on for a simple oil change. This is one of the reasons I will only go to Good Works Auto Repair. Because I trust them. Putting trust in an auto shop didn't come easily. It's been built over several visits with them doing exactly what was needed. Not coercing me into unnecessary work. Ask them for an oil change and a safety inspection. They do just that. No baloney, list of filters, belts, and whatchamacallits that need replacing on my new car. Thank you, Good Works Auto Repair, for being there for me when I need you. Appreciate the kind words. It's always a pleasure. Glenn Hayward here. Come experience what award-winning auto service should be. Good Works Auto Repair in Tempe or visit us at goodworksautorepair.com. Ouch! Being out of tune is no fun and maybe even a little painful. Hi, this is Lee Weatherby owner of Accurate Automotive in Mesa. At Accurate, we are a family-owned and operated one-stop automotive repair shop that specializes in building long-term relationships that are in tune with your needs, not ours. We've been recognized nationally as one of the top shops in the country, but for over 20 years, our priority has stayed focused on providing quality automotive service and repair at a fair price. I invite you to come in and see the difference an in-tune relationship can make for you and your car. With our free courtesy inspection, a $49 value, we feel it is well worth our investment in you because we believe good long-term relationships start early with your first walk through our doors. Accurate Automotive, home of friends serving friends, just off Broadway and Robson in Mesa since 1992. For more information, check us out online at accurateautomotiveaz.com today. Hi, I'm Kurt Morgan, owner of Shadow Mountain Auto Service in Phoenix. I'm also a college automotive instructor, and I've been a technician for over 30 years. In that time, I've seen all kinds of games and gimmicks in the auto repair business, the worst of which seems to be associated with transmissions. I think it's because, to most, including technicians, the inside of a transmission is a mystery. So when one of our valued customers has a transmission problem, we send them straight to Tri-City Transmission. No games, no gimmicks. That's Tri-City Transmission. KTAR News, on air, 92.3 FM, online at KTAR.com, and on every device with a KTAR app. Arizona's breaking news and traffic, now. KTAR News Time, 1130. I'm Mike Sackley. The funeral mass for Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia has wrapped up. A blessing quickly lost when faith is banned from the public square or when we refuse to bring it there. 
So he understood that there is no conflict between loving God and loving one's country, between one's faith and one's public service. That's Scalia's son, the Reverend Paul Scalia, who led the Mass today. Vice President Joe Biden and the Supreme Court justices were in attendance. Arizona votes. Votes are being cast in the Republican presidential primary in South Carolina. In Greenville, supporters gathered for Jeb Bush. Bush will be here in Columbia this evening, as will Senators Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz for rallies as the votes are tabulated. Donald Trump will be in Spartanburg. Dr. Ben Carson with three stops before his election night party in Greenville. Governor John Kasich will watch the results from Massachusetts. He's already turning his focus to the Northeast. Ryan Burrow, ABC News, Columbia. And we'll have election coverage starting at 5 p.m. tonight here on KTAR News. Surgeries will resume at the Phoenix VA starting Monday. Officials postponed surgeries this week due to some technical difficulties with the operating room ventilation system. All surgeries are being rescheduled. Now let's get a check on traffic in the RMEGold.com traffic center. Here's Adrian Viella. Well, thank you very much, Mike. Looking at the freeways, there was a vehicle fire to watch out for on the 60 westbound east of McClintock, but looking at the cameras now, it looks like it's just about gone off the freeways. You have a crash in Phoenix, 43rd Avenue, north of Bell, 7th Street and Camelback, and one more on Cave Creek and Union Hills. And in Maricopa, you have another accident there you want to try to avoid Casa Grande and Highway 347. I'm Adrian Viella, KTAR News. Sunny skies today with a high of 86, clear tonight, the low 55, sunny Sunday with a high of 87. Right now in Gilbert, 77 degrees. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. Weather replace or repair, call Howard Air. Matt and Dave, KTAR's car guys on Bumper to Bumper, back with you next. I'm Mike Sackley, KTAR News. Arizona, an amazing state for outdoor recreation and exploration. Full of mountains, lakes, streams, forests, and of course, our beautiful deserts. Hunting, fishing, camping. If it's about the outdoors, we've got it covered. KTAR invites you to get outdoors with Mike Russell. Today at noon, KTAR News on 92.3 FM and on every device with the KTAR app. Cool cars, cool people, and good times. There are literally thousands of hot rods. That's what you get at a Good Guys Giant Automotive Festival. My husband loves the swap meet and all the treasures he can find for his car. We're kicking off the hot rodding season at Westworld in Scottsdale, March 4 through 6, with the 7th Spring Nationals. We're here for the autocross racing competition. Totally a hot rodder's dream. The kids love the cars and I love cars, so why not bring the family out, right? We're the good guys. March 4 through 6 at Westworld. Get tickets and more info at good-guys.com. Hi, Lisa Henry with Russ Lyon Sotheby's International Realty. Have you been thinking maybe the time is right to move, but you're not sure if you have enough equity in your home or if it really is a good time? Well, home values have increased significantly over the past few years and interest rates are still historically low. For how long? No one knows. But for every 1% increase in the interest rate, the result is about a 10% loss in purchasing power. So it might be a really great time to sell your home and either upsize or downsize to a new home while the interest rates are still low. Contact me via my website at lisareneehenry.com or direct at 480-330-9530 for a no-obligation market valuation on your home and to hear about our global online marketing plan designed to sell your home quickly for top dollar. Again, that's lisareneehenry.com, 480-330-9530. Come experience the difference a truly customer-focused real estate agent can make. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. This is Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we're talking about air conditioned service. And you hear us talk a lot about having a relationship and not being an orphan customer. And maybe you're thinking, gosh, I should get in and get that AC service. My car is three years old, four years old. I've never had that done. Uh, I don't know if the air conditioning is working as good as it needs to be. But I don't even know where to go. I mean, I went back to the dealer where it was under warranty, but now I'm out of warranty. So I need a shop that I can call home. 
Well, Bumper to Bumper Radio is all about helping you find that shop. Uh, and you can find a list of shops that Matt and I endorse at BumperToBumperRadio.com. These are good shops that you can call home, as well as Matt and I both own automotive shops. This is not something that we talk about that we're not in. We're in the shop every day seeing these repairs, talking to customers, seeing what your need is. My shop is Tri-City Transmission Service. We're in Tempe, right next to Tempe Marketplace. And, Matt, you're at... He's got to turn his mic on. Yeah, I had to think about where I am. I'm in space, Dave. La, la, la. <laughs> well, no, my shop, you know, and, and Dave, moment. you're right. People often ask, well, what qualifies you guys? How are you the car guys? What, what's, you know, what's going on? What's your experience? So I'm an ASC certified master tech. I'd say I'm 46 now. I've been doing this, I guess, since I was 18. I mean, my first job was in a, a salvage yard taking apart cars, direct 280Zs that we used to used to restore. So this is all I've ever done. I've had my shop, Virginia Auto Service, which is downtown 7th Street, just south of Thomas, uh, over 21 years now. And uh, so, again, we're in the shops. We're working. We're working with our customers. Um, Every day we're seeing repairs, and we are in business to help people. You know, there's there's people out there that that are investors in a business. There's people that uh, are just here to make some money. And I always tell people, you know, we want your business forever. Mm. You know, I, I need your business. I need all the people that you work with, and I want your friends and family. So I we you know, Dave, you know, this is going to parlay into a whole other thing. But you see reviews online, and you see this stuff. It's not like we, we I wake up every day and so do my guys go, we want to go in, we want to do a good job right. for people. It feels good. I'm a problem solver by nature. So it feels good when someone comes into the shop with a broken car and you can send them out that same day, hopefully, or maybe the next day. Their problem is solved and they're happy and they have confidence and they're back on the road and you just feel good about it. And that's what we go to work to strive to do every single day. And that's going to be true of all the shops that you find at Bumper to Bumper Radio. I always say when I'm talking to customers on the phone and I've got it, you know, sometimes I'm giving bad news because I'm selling them a transmission and it's not cheap. And I tell them, hey, listen, we're in the business of building friends, not enemies. So when I bump into you at Safeway and we're, we're you know, it's not going to be strange or weird or awkward because I made all effort to make it go well for you. So... That's the kind of shop you want to set up a relationship with, not necessarily just married to a shop because of a coupon. I mean, you know, and coupons are part of life, and, and uh, coupons are effective for businesses that are starting out and growing. And that hey, I, I advertise. I use coupons. We, we still need to, to go fishing for good customers. Uh, but and occasionally we we do that with a coupon. So there's nothing wrong with them. A good coupon at a good shop is good, but a good coupon at a bad shop is not good. We've got Ron, Rick, Ryan, and up first this segment, we're going to go with Chris with a 2010 Toyota 4Runner. How can we help you, Chris? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. Pleasure talking to you. I had a question about our suspension system on the 4Runner. It's an, an adaptive suspension system. Called, I believe it's called the X-Rays right. Adaptive. And uh, I got the front left shock absorber, the um, C joint or the hydraulic connection to the shock absorber hose got ripped off. Okay. And I was wanting to replace the whole uh, system or without having the uh, hydraulic component to it. My question was is if I was to do two shocks at a time, would that work uh, with keeping the uh, hydraulic system in line, or do I have to remove it all at once? So you want oh. to convert it from a non-electronic type to just no. to more of a traditional? Is that what you're saying? No, I don't think so. On the on the Forerunner, um, I think, Chris, what you're talking about, it's got the uh, just the quick connect hose that plugs into the shock, right? Yeah, I believe it is. It, 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 uh, it uh, has a hydraulic connection, and it has its own reservoir. Um, from the research that I've done, uh, you can eliminate the uh, hydraulic component, but uh, if I have it open, meaning the hose being ripped off of the uh, connection there, I was just trying to uh, do it without having to replace it all at once or 
by just doing like the front two and then the rear two at a later time, or I is this something you, that I have to? I think you can replace those individually. And I, I am sorry, I'd have to refresh my memory on that exact Toyota system. I think it is across the 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 left front is connected with the right rear. But I don't believe that's a true. Correct. It's it's not a true hydraulic system like we would have on a Mercedes, where it's actually filled gotcha. with, where it's actually filled with hydraulic oil and it has a pump. My belief, my recollection is that the um, that it's it's a nitrogen charge. It's an air thing. So if that hose, oh, de- okay. depending on where the hose was, if that actually got ripped off, well, then you would, um, if it, it was plugged in, then it would, might discharge the entire shock. So you would have to replace the hose first, and then the new shock will come with the appropriate charge in it. I, again, I'd have to refresh my memory to know I was saying, you know, giving you the exact good advice. Um, I'm sure the guys at the Toyota parts department, you're not going to be able to find those shocks in the aftermarket, I don't think. So, and if that hose is actually ripped, that's going to be a original equipment type deal too. So, I think you've got still got a little bit of research to do. Well, thanks for the call, Chris. Six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven. I do want to respond. We get texts at four one one nine two three. The gentleman is asking, he's got a, a Hyundai with a bad airbag module, and he's wondering if he replaces that module, if it will have to be programmed. And that's not something I'm going to know off the top of my head. But on these modern cars, when you do replace a module, you have to, a lot of, a lot of times, give the address of that module to the rest of the system. I don't know if that's one of those. You know, I guess you could replace it and find out, see if you still got still got an issue. So, well, well and, and, but if you replaced it, then you still have an issue. You still don't know if it needs programming, right, exactly. or if you still have the same issue because you misdiagnosed it. That's again, that's one of those parts when you call the parts department. That's you're the not, question I always ask when I call. Hey, does that module need programming? Uh, let me check. You know, and some of them need programming. Some of them need coding. Um, you know, it's it's just not your what they say your father's Oldsmobile anymore. We've got a <laughs> lot of computers on these cars now. Let's get to an ever patient Ryan on a 2006 Subaru Outback. How can we help you, Ryan? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi right, guys, thanks for taking my call. You bet. Um, we have, I guess, my question is twofold. We've got a, a you know an older Subaru Outback 2006 with just over a hundred thousand miles, and we've had a ton of maintenance in the last like. 10, 10k or so, and everything I read says that that's just regular on these on these Subarus. But we had like the two thousand dollar timing belt um, and all of the different gaskets and everything that go with that, uh, and then uh, axles all the way around because the bearings go at around a hundred. And now I'm noticing that the car is riding pretty rough, um, not in conjunction with the repairs. But just in general, it, it feels like it's it's running pretty rough. So I guess my, my twofold question is, what's a good way to know if you need struts on these guys? Uh, if you're if you're ready for that, or is there a general mileage that, that you guys recommend? And then also, is, is this a regular thing on Subarus where you see people having to drop you know four or five thousand dollars at around a hundred thousand miles? Well, I think I think my answer is a couple fold because I think it really applies to everybody that's listening. I mean, I drive a Honda Element and I'm approaching 85,000 miles, and within the last 5,000 miles, I can tell that the ride has really deteriorated. I think I'll probably go to 100,000 miles before I go ahead and put struts on it. But the other part of the question is, hey, this thing's now got 100,000 miles on it, and it's asking me for all this money, and people are surprised. You know, it's been 100,000 miles, and the car has been great. But things just, they, they do wear. And at 100,000 miles, your car is going to ask you for some money. And so a lot of times I'm talking to people, they say, well, all these things are going wrong with it. There is kind of a portion in the life cycle of that car where some of those things that just wear out, you're going you're gonna to pull your wallet out and you're going to fix them and tell you what, the, the nice thing is if the car is well maintained, you're going to get another 100,000 miles out of it. But it's kind of a window of time where, gosh, it seems like every time I turn yeah, around, I'm putting money in this car. And that's when people punt the car, and that's not necessarily a good financial decision. Well, if I'm doing Dave Ramsey math. Right, and it sounds to me like Ryan likes to take care of his car. Ryan, you can ignore your struts. If you don't care about how the car rides, nobody says you have to replace them. But it seems to me like Ryan wants to keep his car running. And, and I want to go back back it up a little bit. You know, he sound a little skeptical, like, gosh, should I be doing this? Or mm. is it time to punt the car? 2006 Subaru is a great car. 
what, what I'd like to see you do, Ryan, is go in, go to your shop that's been doing this work for you, and say, hey, guys, give it the once-over. Tell me everything. Let's see. You know, tell me about this. You know, and I'll talk about the stretch. You need them. Yeah, <laughs> you got 100,000 miles. You, yeah. you need them. I need I mean, them at 85. I mean, the know. manufacturers say every 50,000 miles you need to start thinking about it. To that's because that, they're that, selling stretch. That's because they're selling. That's way, way, way too aggressive. But I can almost guarantee that, that you need them. Uh, but let's get everything looked at at the car. The question I would say is, what's wrong now? What do you see? What can you predict as far as maintenance in the next several thousand miles? And what else is hanging out there? What would you do if this was your car, Mr. Service Advisor or Mr. Technician, if you want to keep it to 150,000 miles? I don't, it's I don't kind know. of like rebuying your car. It's like reboot. Control, alt, delete. Boom. Yep. We're gonna, you're going to rebuy that car again, but you're not going to buy it this time for $40,000. You're going to buy it for $6,000 and get it all done, and the thing's going to be fantastic to drive for a long period of time. I think it's kind of funny, Matt, when you say, well, what would you do if it was your car? Well, that sometimes is a wrong question for a guy that works on cars because he's got like a screwdriver going through his floorboard so he can shift it into four-wheel drive. So that's, sometimes that's like a, a shoemaker's kids go without shoes. So we're not always the best. What would you do? Oh, I'd live with it, you know? True, and, and true, to Some people, true. you know, that little yellow light being on is a big deal. To some people, it's not a big deal. They're like, ah, oh, I live dangerous, you know? But I think you get you get the idea, though. It's it's It's... What would you do the best way to fix it if you want to keep your car? So it sounds like Ryan's on the right track. Just just need some reassurance he's driving something good. Well, you're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Ouch. Being out of tune is no fun and maybe even a little painful. Hi, this is Lee Weatherby owner of Accurate Automotive in Mesa. At Accurate, we are a family-owned and operated one-stop automotive repair shop that specializes in building long-term relationships that are in tune with your needs, not ours. We've been recognized nationally as one of the top shops in the country, but for over 20 years, our priority has stayed focused on providing quality automotive service and repair at a fair price. I invite you to come in and see the difference an in-tune relationship can make for you and your car. With our free courtesy inspection, a $49 value, we feel it is well worth our investment in you because we believe good long-term relationships start early with your first walk through our doors. Accurate Automotive, home of friends serving friends, just off Broadway and Robson in Mesa since 1992. For more information, check us out online at accurateautomotiveaz.com today. Hey friends, Jerry Colangelo here, inviting you to swing by Red's Bar and Grill at the Wigwam Golf Club for a unique dining and entertainment experience. Overlooking the arch palms and rolling greens of this historic golden Patriot courses, Red's is a central gathering spot for West Valley sports fans. With 14 big screen TVs, there's plenty of room to watch all the games all season long. You can get in the Red's zone any day of the week for great specials, Thursday through Monday, and for happy hour from 3 to 6 p.m. daily. See you there. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If you're car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Who can you trust here in the valley to repair your ride? This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I hope you are enjoying the show today. I am Matt Allen along with Dave Riccio. Every single Saturday, we are your KTIR car guys here helping you with your car. We do that by call-in, uh, which you can do. We're not going to give out the phone number because I think we're full on calls, Dave. And uh, texting, 411-923. And we've got a text here. Oh, boy, my glasses aren't working so good today. But basically, I have a loud squealing noise under my hood. What could it be? It could be a cat. <laughs> you know, you get a rear with that, though. <laughs> yeah, could be that. We've rescued a couple of those uh, over the years. Uh, but, you know, most of the time you hear about a squeal under the hood, I think of a belt. But there's a belt. There's all kinds of other stuff. Dave, what else? It's all ball bearings nowadays. It's got to be ball bearings. It's, it's all be ball, ball bearings. bearings huh? <laughs> was that too scripted? <laughs> that was way too scripted. <laughs> so, <laughs> We're just not that creative, but we try. Uh, no, but that was a, a, a true text, the question. I have a squealing noise. 
used to always go, oh, it's just got to be the belt. As a matter of fact, we had a, a customer at the counter the other day, and she said, well, my friend or someone said, just put some belt dressing on it. <laughs> well, I dress them up in black because it goes with pearls. <laughs> <laughs> but no, belt dressing is, is not going to fix your problem if you've got a squeal or something. Uh, you know, the belts, they, they take um, a lot of abuse nowadays. They're wound tight. There's a serpentine belt. They've got a turn. They've really got to wrap the pulleys tight, have a lot of tension to keep these. We talk about weak in, batteries and alternators and air conditioning compressors. These, and in all so, seriousness, the ball bearings for the, you know, the all that tension on those belts, those bearings do go bad. So there's well, there's a series of pulleys. So alternator pulley, there's there's the idler pulley, tensioner, all that stuff. And if you've got 100,000 miles and you're buying a belt, it might not be a bad time to replace that tensioner. The bearing may be good, but that spring that holds tension on the belt has been has been worked for 100,000 miles. Yeah, and it's bouncing around. That thing's not steady. So it, it's more and more these are being sold in component kits because the belts last so long now, They and, and they, they typically have the same expected life span, the belt and the bearing. And so oftentimes they go together. Well, let's get to the phones. Let's get to Ron on a 2004 Ford. Go ahead, Ron. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. What can we help you with? Hey, guys. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I'm having an issue with my – it's trying to stall out. It started with stalling out a little, and then when I have it in park and it's idling, if I gave it a little gas, it'll cut off immediately. So you, I'm not even, really sure. So are you able to drive this vehicle? Um, yeah, I can drive it. It's just that um, it started with uh, stalling out in park when I got on the gas, but then now it's, um, okay. when I approach a light, it kind of tries to shut off if I get on the brake too hard. There we go. Okay. So, so most people don't sit and park and apply the, apply the gas pedals. So let's, so no, I mean, I was like, <laughs> I, uh, it, it was when I started it to go to work and I got in, it kind of tried to stall okay. and then I, you know, gave it a little gas and that's when it did it. Okay. I didn't just, yeah. So, so driving along, you're just out cruising around on your Saturday afternoon. You're going to approach the stoplight, and as you come to the light, you're slowing down. The car wants to. It's, the truck seems like it's going to stall. Like it hesitates. The idle gets real low. Is that what happens? Correct. And then yes. what happens when you finally do to come to the stop? Does it stall? No, it does not. And does it run rough? I'm sorry. What was that? So, so it wants to stall, but it doesn't stall. Does it seem like it has a low idle, or does it run rough, or feel like a misfire? Um, it's more like a misfire. Okay. Is the check engine light on? No, it is not. Does the check engine light come on when you turn the key on? Do you know? No, no, it does not. Okay. Well, we might be getting into another thing, uh, and I'm asking you some questions you may not know, and these are the things that we're going we're gonna to figure out at our shop. So your car is sophisticated enough that if it does have an engine misfire, it's gonna, the computer is going to detect that, and I would be surprised that you don't have a check engine light on. Um, you, you, may, you may have some, just some roughness, but what I want you to do is get in the car, and when you turn the car on, make sure that the check engine light actually works. This might be a case where the light's not on because it doesn't actually it, it doesn't physically work and can't illuminate. But there's it, I, we really don't have enough information over the telephone to be able to give you a whole lot of ideas. You could have a vacuum leak. You could have a number of different things happening. But these things mostly will make the check engine light turn on. So I want to make sure that light's working. If it is, then it's going to be a situation where we just need to get it into a shop and, and have some better information to find out what's wrong with it. Well, thanks for the call, Ron. If you're looking for a shop because you don't have one to call home, you can find them at bumper to bumperradiocom There's shops all over the valley that uh, you can start a relationship with. Well, let's go with Rick on a 2000 Chevy. How can we help you, Rick? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, mine's pretty easy, I guess. It's uh, when I shut the fan off on the switch, it clicks under the dash, and if I turn the air all the way to cold, it clunks under the dash. That's the problem. Clicks and clunks, huh? Clicks and clunks. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the fan switch, if it goes off, it clicks under there, and the cold switch, if I put it all the way to cold, it clunks. 
Well, there is inside your dash on that Chevrolet, there's duct work that carries the air, whether that's going to be the air to the floorboard or the air up to the defroster or the air out the dashboard pointing at you. And or it's also going to be mixing the temperature. So in order to get your air temperature from hot to cold, sometimes you want warm. It's going to mix some cold air and some hot air. Those are called blend doors. It blends the air, or there's the mode door, which is going to move the mode, so up or down to the floor or out at your face or a mixture of mm -hmm. both. And it sounds like we're starting to have an issue with a blend door or a blend door motor. And sometimes they just get out of sequence with the controls. So sometimes they just need to relearn. You know, I've seen that happen on, on GMs from time Especially to time. Especially when you change the battery. Change the battery. You guys changed my battery and broke my air conditioner. That's right. So all of those things, you know, could be an actual problem with the motor or, or it may just need to be refreshed as far as the computer goes to get that thing working again. Something fairly simple. It, it, it is a shop, in-shop repair, though. For sure. Well, thanks for the call, Rick. Let's see if we can quickly help Chris on a 99 Bonneville. How can we help you, Chris? You're on Bumper to Bumper hey, Radio. Nice to hear you guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. you. Uh, I have a 99 uh, Bonneville, Pontiac Bonneville SE, uh, six-cylinder, and uh, my transmission works absolutely perfectly when the en engine is cold. When I turn the car on first when, in the morning, when it's the very first time, the car moves just an inch or so forward. And when it gets up to full temperature, uh, running temperature, it kind of like bumps into gears. And I was thinking about bringing it into the Tri-City because you guys talk about it, and I just wonder what my problem might be. Yeah, what we would do and what's going on more than likely is you think the car's working perfectly when it's cold. It's It does. It's like smooth as silk. Smooth as silk. But what the what the computer is recognizing is a problem with the transmission. And so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the taps, which is the, the transmission adaptive pressures. And we're going to see if there is a problem and it's adapting for something. So after the computer recognizes a problem, it moves all those adaptive pressure all the way up. And you're going to get a hard shift until the next time you turn a car off. So definitely something we see on a regular basis on that transmission, 4T65. Shouldn't be a big deal to diagnose. So I appreciate the phone call. And we'll be back next week. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Cool cars, cool people, and good times. There are literally thousands of hot rods. That's what you get at a Good Guys Giant Automotive Festival. My husband loves the swap meet and all the treasures he can find for his car. We're kicking off the hot rodding season at Westworld in Scottsdale, March 4 through 6, with the 7th Spring Nationals. We're here for the autocross racing competition. Totally a hot rodder's dream. The kids love the cars, and I love cars, so why not bring the family out, right? We're the good guys. March 4th through 6th at Westworld. Get tickets and more info at good-guys.com. Come out and enjoy a family experience like no other as the greatest women golfers in the world return to Phoenix for the JTBC Founders Cup, March 15th to the 20th. Support local charities like the LPGA USGA Girls Golf of Phoenix while watching the best of the best battle it out for the Founders Cup title. Tickets can be purchased online at lpgafounderscup.com. The JTBC Founders Cup. Swing by. We'll save you a seat. Hi, I'm Scott, General Manager with Whitey's Auto Repair here in South Scottsdale. We built a reputation for quality auto service and repair for over 45 years, and our customers have come to trust us for our recommendations. We value that trust, and that's why when it comes to transmissions, for the past several decades, we have been recommending Tri-City Transmission. They have yet to disappoint. I feel so strongly about it, I wouldn't go anywhere else. Why would you? Google them online today at tricitytransmission.com. Go where the pros go. Tri-City Transmission. Join us for everything automotive on Bumper to Bumper Radio with Dave Riccio and Matt Allen, the KTAR Car Guys, every Saturday, 11 to noon on KTAR News 92.3 FM. Winter is finally here. Is your car ready? Whether it's snow up north, rain in the valley, or 75 degrees, Dave and Matt got you covered. And remember, 24-7, there's Bumper to Bumper Radio.com. It's a must for the best car repair and body shops you can trust. Drive in anxious, cruise out feeling fine with Bumper to Bumper Radio.